Hello, Christ is in our midst. I'm Father Kevin Long of St. Elia, St. Eurican Orthodox Church in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Today is Monday, November 22nd, 2021, and here are the readings for today. The first reading is from St. Paul's letter to Philemon, chapter 1, verses 1 through 25. Paul, a prisoner for Christ Jesus, and Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, our beloved fellow worker, and Aphia, our sister, and Archippus, our fellow soldier, and the church in your house. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God always when I remember you in my prayers, because I hear of your love and of the faith which you have towards the Lord Jesus and all the saints, and I pray that the sharing of your faith may promote the knowledge of all good that is ours in Christ. For I have derived much joy and comfort from your love, my brother, because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you. Accordingly, Though I am bold enough in Christ to command you to do what is required, yet for love's sake I prefer to appeal to you. I, Paul, an ambassador, and now a prisoner also for Christ Jesus, I appeal to you for my child, Anisimus, whose father I have become in my imprisonment. Formerly he was useless to you, but now he is indeed useful to you and to me. I am sending him back to you, sending my very heart. I would have been glad to keep him with me in order that he might serve me on your behalf during my imprisonment for the gospel. But I preferred to do do nothing without your consent, in order that your goodness might not be by compulsion, but by your own free will. Perhaps this is why he was parted from you for a while, that you might have him back forever, no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, as a beloved brother especially to me, but how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord. So, if you consider me your partner, receive him as you would receive me. If he has wronged you at all, or owes you anything, charge that to my account. I, Paul, write this with my own hand. I will repay it, to say nothing of your owing me even your own self. Yes, brother, I want some benefit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. Confident of your obedience, I write to you, knowing that you will do even more than I say. At the time, at the same time, prepare a guest room for me, for I am hoping through your prayers to be granted to you. Epraphus, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, sends greetings to you, and so do Mark, Aristarchos, Demas, and Luke, my fellow workers. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. Today's Gospel reading is from the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 17, verses 20 through 25. At that time when Jesus was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God was coming, he answered them, The kingdom of God is not coming with signs to be observed, nor will they say, Lo, here it is, or there, for behold, the kingdom of God is in the midst of you. And he said to the disciples, The days are coming when you will desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and you will not see it. And they will say to you, Lo there, or lo here, do not go, do not follow them. For as the lightning flashes and lights up the sky from one side to the other, so will the Son of Man be in his day. But first he must suffer many things, and be rejected by this generation. Glory to thee, our God. Glory to thee. So in looking at the gospel today, I think there's a very important message for us in this age, and that is, we do not know the time or the day that our Lord is coming. There are so many people who want to say, oh, well, it's now, because things have never been worse than they are now. Well, trust me, they were bad then, they're bad now, they'll be bad in the future. There will always be something that we need to be concerned about. If it isn't our current spirit of the age or the threat of some outside force, then maybe it's the Cold War from the generation ago, or maybe it's the Germans and the generation before that, or maybe it's something else, a disease or some kind of pestilence, or even a change in century. All of these things tend to bring anxiety and concern, and, and people want to take signs out of what they see and what they hear and say, well, this means that we're at the end. We're not at the end. However, you need to live every day as if, well, and so do I, need to live every day as if today is the end. We don't know. But what we do know is that we will be required to make account of our lives. 
And so we need to make sure that we are doing the things properly to make sure that when we are called to account for our lives, we have a good defense before the dread judgment seat. That's the challenge of it all. We don't want to vex God by the things that we do. And at the same time, we do need to live our lives. So we do the best we can, sort of striking something that in hopes is well-pleasing to God, but yet is still fulfilling of our own ambitions. These are the challenges of the day. And they are always challenges. They will always present challenges to each and every generation and each of and every day. And it is honestly, in my opinion, somewhat silly for us to think that this generation is any worse off or any closer to the end than any other. Now, granted, days are limited. My, days of my life are limited. And so today I had fewer days than yesterday to live. It's just how it is. But having that sense of God's presence, having a sense of prayer where we understand that we just need to do what's necessary to be well-pleasing to God, Having that as our mindset, there is nothing that we do that will be seen as contrary to his will, and therefore when the time does come, we will be ready. And that's our challenge, to be ready, to do what we have to do, to be ready at all times, all places, every day, and any day. And may God bless you and those that you love today and always. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Thank you very much for joining me. Have a great day, and God willing, we'll see you tomorrow.